Um, before we kick this off, I just uh, we lost a valuable member to our organization yesterday. Glenn Dirk passed away, a longtime scout here, 29 years. Um, gave his heart and soul to the organization. So our condolences to the entire organization and our condolences to his entire family. Thanks, Fitz. Fitz, obviously yesterday was a very long day for you, for your staff, for your players. What was your overall impressions of your exit meetings and what was your overall message to really your core group of players? Well, it's nice to hear the, you know, um, some thoughts. I, I, I'm very curious on where their mindset was this year, where it's at now, and where it needs to go. So I asked a lot of questions, um, some different questions for different people. I'm not asking the younger players on our organization the same as I asked the older players and more experienced players. Um, but really, just you know, wanted to see truly and sincerely how disappointing this season is for for everybody in this organization, starting with me. Um, we don't want this to happen again. But with that being said, there's there's a lot of things that have to happen. You know, we do have a lot of talent on this team. Extraordinary amount of talent. We do have, uh, we are a fast team. When we think and play quick, we're a very fast team. But it's just, this isn't, the, the maturity of this, or, this team has to continue to grow. Um, and that's everyone. It's it's challenging themselves. It's 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 taking the next step in leadership. And I'm not just talking about the guys who, who wear letters. But there's 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 another level that we have to get to. And I'm not just talking about on ice. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about off ice too, as well. You know, leading the way, off the ice, um, doing things in the weight room is 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 as important as the extra stuff you do on the ice, whether it's D drills, face offs for centers, wall play for wingers. It's all encompassing. And, and we've got to get there. We've got to we've got to value those things to make the next step. With that being said, then you get to the on ice, you know, better details, better habits, practice habits. Are we in the best possible shape we possibly we can be in? Um, when you are, the game's easier. It slows down more. Um, when you're stronger and you're faster and you can actually stay out there for a minute and 20 seconds at 45 seconds you're still you're at your top peak if you can do that so that that's something where we need to get to that's a level we need to get to um, so overall there's 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 a lot that we have to put back in place or get in place value places um, but with that being said th this this is very disappointing, but it's also very exciting for me personally that I, I get to put my handprints on this organization moving forward and add to the core that we wholeheartedly believe in and believe that they, they, they're going to grow from this experience um, and push each other uh, and take the next step in leadership, uh, keeping each other accountable. It's their locker room. What they, again, what they permit is what they promote. Um, really believe in this group. So uh, uh, excited about the off season and, and where we need to get to and, and really try to help th this core uh, get to the level they need to get to. Did you feel your players were responsive to that message when you were talking to them? Absolutely. I, they've got curious mindsets, the growth mentalities, they want to get better. And sometimes you got to punch people right in the nose and to, to realize, oh, this is reality. Um, what we got is what we deserve. How much did, I mean, we, we talk about injuries and not wanting to make excuses, obviously, but sometimes there is a reality there. How much did losing Dougie, um, you know, create a trickle-down effect? Obviously, uh, Nemo and Luke got bigger minutes, but where did that really impact your team, you think? Well, it impacted the, the, the entire cohesiveness of what we wanted to do. Uh, you look at this year versus last year and the man's game lost. Uh, completely different. Um, you know, at one point we had 30 plus million dollars uh, out of our lineup, and uh, that's it's not an excuse. It just it, it tells you you need to lean on other things to be competitive each game, and those are the details and the habits and style of play we we needed to really be consistent with um, because of who we didn't have in the lineup. Missing Dougie is uh, he's 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 one of the best players in the league at his position for a reason, and. Uh, he's here for a reason, and it's tough to replace. Now, with that being said, I think the silver lining of all that and some injuries was the, the, the amount of growth our younger players in particular 
uh, Luke and, and, and Simone and, and, and Kevin Ball on, on the back end, um, invaluable what they've gained in experience uh, with, with the injuries. Um, we believe there's, like all young players, there's going to be growth. We saw it with Jack. We saw it with Jesper. We saw it with Nico from one year to the next with experience. And we don't uh, we don't anticipate anything less from from those three in particular that that this this experience will pay forward. Tom, on on the coaching search, mm -hmm. uh, what what quality um, qualities in candidates are are you looking at? And then, as for specifics, I mean, is this timeline wise? Is this a pre draft decision? And you know, uh, just things like that. Uh, well, great question. And, and the reality is that yes, I'd like to to have something in place before the draft. Um, that gives me flexibility with the, the available candidates, um, including Travis. And, and hey, you, did just, you don't know what could shake out after the first round either. I want to take my time with this, um, but I have specific areas that I want to check, boxes that I want checked. One, they have to be ex be an excellent communicator. Negative feedback, positive feedback, but feedback, constant feedback. I, I, the players crave it. They want it. Um, <laughs> communicating upwards, communicating with management, communicating, being able to communicate with, with our managing partners um, for questions and feel comfortable in that situation. Um, lots of feedback, you know, po like I said, positive and negative. So communication is, is, is a big one. Um, someone who's collaborative. Who, who, who wants to collaborate with all different areas of, of the organization, in particular me, someone that could, who understands and where I think the team needs to get to and, and how do we do that. Players that uh, we'll, we will need, we work together. Um, I'm not a dictator. I work with everybody. I think I'm very collaborative uh, in, with information and use all that information to try to make the, the best decisions I possibly can as, as the, the, the manager. Um, you know, someone who, when I talk about collaboration, that is is using the things that are at our, our, our fingertips, analytics for decisions and personnel or strategy on how we want to play, um, sports science. You know, it's to, to me, it's it's real. It's there now, where we can use the information from from the equipment that we use to, to gauge where our plays are at in practice and what kind of practices we we need. Um, and what we can, when we can push, and when we have to pull back. Uh, so someone who believes in that um, and will utilize that uh, is is one. And then lastly, accountability. A coach who is going to keep every player, not just a handful of guys, accountable. Um, if you don't have accountability, you, you you really don't have the building blocks to a championship caliber team you want to get to, in my opinion. And with that being said, we need players who understand uh, accountability and want to be held accountable and want to be able to, and should be able to look in the mirror and say, you're right, you're right, I got to be better, and this isn't good enough. And that may be just, that may be, like I said, I, it may be not enough time in the weight room, you know, just checking a box there and just doing it versus no, you get in there because that is as important as the face-offs and as an example. Um, so yeah, those those in particular areas are, are, are what I'm looking for, and I think this organization deserves that. Um, and, and what about Travis's tenure uh, gives you confidence to you know, give him a, a, a serious look here, as you, as you mentioned? Well, and Travis is well aware of my intentions, and, and, and I owe it to the organization to, to make sure I, I scour the coaching world with uh, who I believe uh, would be the perfect coach for this group moving forward for what's available out there. Um, I mean, Travis, I've known Travis a long time, but I, I, I didn't know him as a head coach. He came in as an assistant, completely different roles. Um, you know, how you, you know, who your, who your responsibilities, uh, who you're dealing with on a daily basis versus being the head coach. Um, I liked what I saw of Travis. You know, I, I think he checks a lot of boxes. Um, I, I think he's a no-nonsense head coach. Um, I think he's very open, and players know where he stands and his thoughts, um, and that's important. Um, but like I said, and Travis knows this, it's, it's my responsibility to, 
to make sure that uh, every stone is, is, is unturned or turned over. You obviously understand how pivotal of, a, of an offseason this is. Um, I guess how much pressure, be it internally or, or whatever, um, do you feel entering this summer? And what's, what's your message to fans, you know, as to why they should have confidence in, in, in the decisions you're about to make, especially you talk about, you know, the big game hunt for the goalie and, and things like that? Well, I, I think I've done a really good job. Um, building this team with the help of my predecessor before and, and bringing the right pieces. Um, you know, when I look back, we look back at the uh, decision on bringing Lindy Ruffin as the head coach to, to, to do certain things with the young lads that we had and, and grow them. Uh, I think I know we did that. Um, this is the fun part. Like, I'm, I'm actually so excited about this because I, I know exactly what this team needs. I know exactly what these individuals need. I know what they want, um, and they crave they they crave that excellence. Um, you know, I've got I've got you know David Blitzer and Josh Harris's full autonomy to to make decisions, uh, the right decisions um, for where I think this organization uh, needs to go, um, and that's with internal people and pushing players the right way and understanding how to get to the next level because we, we we need to get to that next level and we've made commitments to uh, an abundance of players um, and I've been made have, have, have a commitment and I know exactly what my duties are um, there are areas that I I know we need to upgrade now you know and and my job is to go out and find those 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 people um, and players to help so I'm very confident I I, I believe Last year was no fluke. I think that was a team. Will we ever get 112 points again? I hope so. But that's not the standard. The standard is, you know, how we conduct ourselves, how we practice every day, how we play every day. I always say this, and you've heard it before, is let's not put the cart before the horse. We can have all the talent in the world, but if we're not will willing to put in the work, the effort, and the energy, um, and the passion, that's all for nothing. You, you've mentioned, you know, with Allen at the deadline, uh, how it was, you know, the no trade, uh, or no move clause and things like that. That was the reason that you couldn't get him earlier. But do you look at how he and Capo have played since the deadline? And do you think to yourself, maybe I could have gotten one of those done sooner? Sure. Um, in hindsight, yeah. Uh, but then the, I said this, at, maybe I did say it's a deadline. It's, a, it's called a deadline for a reason. That's when teams leverage the most out of a return because it's the 11th hour. So if deals were easily made earlier, I think you'd see a lot more deals made. You just don't. It's, that's the reality of a deadline. Um, but with that being said, like Jake Allen had some hesitation on coming to New Jersey. And I think part of my responsibility and, and as I became the manager of this team is to shift the mindset of, this is a really good place to play, and we'll show you. You have to come and see it and experience to understand it. And now that we've we've attracted the the, the Dougie Hamiltons and the Palats and, and held on to Timo Meyer and uh, a guy like Jake Allen sees this place differently and is extremely excited about moving his family here and understanding where we are as a, a group, and he's he's super excited. I think. I think my group internally has created this uh, – has helped create New Jersey to, to be a destination. And our players obviously are big help there. Um, um, but it is a destination. And I think I, I have to t tip my hat to my group for knowing how to sell it, the players for, for, for pushing this place to being a place where good players want to come. Um, and, and that's where we're at. It, did, in your talks with, with Capo yesterday, given how well he's played, is that is that a player that you might give a, a fair shot after how well he did in his you know audition, so to speak? And do you have any thoughts on the other uh, upcoming free agents that, that are firing? Well, I can't really talk about any other player until their contracts expire on June 30th. Um, I can talk about ours, and, and Capo came in um, – you know, when you come in from another organization and you think you you, under, you you may think you know what other organizations are like, and when you hear the feedback from, from players that are new and 
whether it's our sports science department, our athlete care department, the way our coaches handled uh, them, how we practiced uh, when they got here, and things that they, they worked on that maybe they didn't work on. Well, I know they didn't work on. <laughs> those were the feedback. Um, it becomes a place like this could be the right place for me. Uh, Capo, I thought he played r really well when he came in. Um, it, it's it's just something I told him. He and his agent, will, and he his agent and I will will speak. You know, see where he's at. Um, but again, it's my it's it's my job to make sure I I know what exactly is going to be available before I make decisions on UFAs. Is, is another decision that's going to have to be made this summer uh, the, the status of some of the assistant coaches? Will there be some turnover there? Or any, anything well, like I want to get through the head coach um, process first. Um, but again, I'm going to remind I'll remind you, I, these are the same coaches that had 112 points last year as well. And uh, these are the same coaches that helped grow, you know, our younger players to, you know, Jack to a 100-point uh, player. And, and it, they're the same coaches. Um, I'm looking for continuity. Every year when you have a down year, a great year, you know, you don't just get extensions when you have great years either. Okay? So it works both ways. Um, I, I will, you know, once I kind of pick through the whoever that next head coach is, what he's looking for in assistance, we'll have a, we'll have a say in that. But do we have really good people. Do you have an update on, on uh, what Seamus Casey might do? If I was a betting man, I would say he's probably leaning towards turning pro. But, you know, with that being said, we talked to him right before, uh, right before the national championship uh, weekend. Um, he, he wasn't sure. There was no pressure at all from, from us. And uh, to, to me, when you forfeit, you know, the rest of your college career, you, you need to be more than two feet in uh, the water. You have, to, you have to jump right in and you have to really want this. Any hesitations, then it, it may not work. Um, so we're going to give him all the time he needs. Tom, I'm not sure if this is something you'll reveal, but is there a priority pecking order of positions when you look at your roster that you feel is a priority as far as how you're going to go about things in the offseason? Well, I think for what we do is we evaluate what we have internally. You know, we have some UFAs that we will discuss. You know, is there a fit at what position in whether it's – a forward, where do they fit? Um, but I, I, I absolutely have no plans to rushing anything with our UFAs. Um, we will go through with internally with my group, my personnel group, my my leadership group, on what we need. You know, where do we need to get better in certain areas? Um, like I said earlier, I I believe in this core. Um, so how do we build around these guys, and how do we how do we become a team we with the identity that we want, um, then with that, you project the possibilities of who could be a UFA, and then talks with other managers who possibly could be available that checks the boxes that we want to add to our, to our organization. Um, we have one goalie under contract other than our two young kids, uh, so an area where I'll, I'll definitely continue to explore. Um, Travis just talked about, you know, he, he mentioned explaining to the players and describing a 200-foot game, how important that is. Um, and my question to you is, do you think there's a difference between playing to score and playing to win? And at times this season, did you, did you kind of see um, an unbalance, let's say, in, in that area? <laughs> Great question, um, and it's it's real. It's a real question. Like because of how well everything went last year, coming back, being down, fighting to get that extra point to get to overtime, our overtime record, things went well, and uh, those aren't things you planned for. They just they just went well. Different story this year, but with that being said, I, I felt. Because there was a time I did speak to the team. And I just said, we cannot outscore our mistakes. No team can. You have to have a base and a foundation of commitment, playing away from the puck, understanding how to be harder to play against. 
And that doesn't mean what everybody assumes it means. It's just staying on top of guys. Where I thought we strived last year was our, our quick break, our quick transition, odd man rushes. Well, teams played us a lot differently this year because they knew what would happen if they didn't. We have to figure out how to break through that. You know, how do we counter? How patient do we need to be versus being all in off every single rush? Um, that's experience. Uh, things weren't easy for this group this year as they easier as last year, in my opinion. I think teams played us differently. Um, but at the end of the game, at the end of the day, scoring goals is, is, is what you need to do to win hockey games uh, at the right time. But it's okay winning one nothing. Last year, beating the Stanley Cup reigning champs, Colorado, one nothing. You have to be willing to do that. And you have to be, you have to be patient. And you have to sometimes make the other team make the mistake so you can counter with the amount of skill and, and, and the amount of firepower that we believe we have. Um, but you have to be willing to do that. And you have to be strong in every other area uh, to get those, those opportunities. So that's where we need to get to. Last year, we talked so much about this leadership core and this group learning about playing in the playoffs and playing to win. What's the biggest improvements and the biggest lessons that this leadership group, especially Nico, Jack, those players that wear the letters, and also some of the other guys that they learned this year? It's a hard league. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a very hard league. And every, every team you play is playing for the same thing to be the best they possibly can, make the playoffs, scratch and claw to get in, and and eventually, you know, hoist that cup over your head. So, you know, to me, it's it's going back to that commitment. You know, are, are we committed to, to do the right things? We say the right things, but are you willing to do the right things? Um, and that, to me, is is maturity thing, you know, and understanding that it is a hard league. It's it's not a switch that you turn off and on where we can play a certain way. You have to be consistent in your in your game, and to me, it starts in practice, and it starts it starts day one of training camp. You know what's the message? How we're going to practice? Every drill has a purpose, um, and you do things habitual. It just becomes a habit. Um, whether it's you know maybe it's not an odd man rush, but we have a middle lane drive, a puck to, from the wing, it's outside the dots, you never beat a goalie. If you do, it's a mistake, it's a bad goal. Get it to the pads, crash and bang. Line up at center ice because you went to the dirty areas. Like, that's, those are habits that we have to get to. Um, and it starts in practice, and it starts with just repetition, repetition, repetition. And it has to be early in the season because as the season winds, goes along, practices become limited. Numbers in practice become limited because of wear and tear. So um, we it's 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 going to be demanded from, from day one. Fitz, you mentioned this already, but the team last year, the roster, wasn't that much different from this year, maybe injuries or such. But what lessons can you learn from other organizations, whether Vegas misses the playoffs, come back and win the Cup, St. Louis misses the playoffs, comes back and win the Cup, Tampa had some setbacks. Lessons you can learn from other organizations, how they took maybe one step backwards but then sprung forward. You've got to be... It's, it's a hard league <laughs> from one year to the next. There's no guarantees of making the playoffs. So you, you've, you've got to be a team that uh, understands what training camp means, the start of your season. You know, um, No one wants to play catch-up because eventually you run out of, you run out of runway. Um, and that's, that's not the way you want to play. Um, you know, Last year when you have a 13-game winning streak and the amount of points we, we, we banked was – obviously crucial for, for the end because a lot of people don't talk about the seven-game losing streak we went on in January. But with that, with those points we got early on, it it just kind of it never became a topic. But internally, it was unacceptable, you know. Um, so consistency. This year was a, a, a year we didn't find consistency. I think we won three in a row once, maybe. Uh, you can't. <laughs> you can't. You can't make the playoffs like that. Um, I just think the, the mindset has to continue to grow on be unflappable. It doesn't matter if team scores open and shift. It doesn't matter. You just keep believing and doing the right things over and over and over again. And those teams that you talked to, they're very experienced teams. 
You know, they had a lot of experience. So um, experience is huge. We're still the sixth youngest team in the league, and that's not an excuse. It's time that this young team matures into understanding what the teams that win actually do to get to, to hoist the cup. And I know we will, and that's what I'm excited about because of the, the core group and how hungry they are and, and how, you know, just <sighs> starving they are for that um, and understand that th this is a very hard league each you, year. You mentioned uh, obviously getting the points early. A lot of the guys mentioned that early, getting the points early on in the season last year allowed them to kind of have a little cushion, if you will. And speaking with Palat, one of the things he mentioned was after they got swept, they you had the President's Trophy, all that, and got swept by Columbus. They actually rethought how they played the game. And is that part of the growth, too? I mean, here's a team that won a President's Trophy, gets swept in the opening round, still kind of went through the hard work of reevaluating everything they did, and then came back, obviously, a few years later to win back to back cups. For sure. Um, you know, that's, that's growth. You know, like when things, I don't want to say were easy for them because they, they won X amount of games and get so many points to win that, that trophy. Um, wasn't their goal. Their goal was to win a, a Stanley Cup. Um, they fell short. Again, I can't speak to what happened there other than I'm sure they were pissed off, angry, you know, upset, um, but also understanding that it wasn't good enough for however they were doing things. Um, and pushing each other, pushing, pushing individually and pushing one another every single day to be the best player can be. You know, I'm looking for guys who want to drag people into the fight on the ice, and I'm looking for guys who want to drag people into the weight room because that's important. That's what I'm, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, Fitzy, one thing to come out of this year will be a draft pick that does look like it's likely to be in the, in the top ten. Um, with where you think this team is in the window, uh, are you looking at that more as a chance to draft a really good young player and prospect, or are you looking at that more as a, a valuable asset that you can use to acquire a, a veteran right now? I'm not looking to give it away, but I'm also willing to, to use it if it helps this team take the next level with, with a, a strong player uh, who can really fill a need of where we want to go. Um, if that doesn't happen, then you're banking uh, you know a future, a, a future NHL player that you feel that can make an impact in your lineup. Uh, and then on the, on the coaching s search, is the the communication things you talked about is that even more important to you than a specific system? Like, are you flexible on system and style that a coach wants to play if they if they match a lot of the other things that that you were talking about? I don't. It really doesn't matter what kind of system we play. I want individuals to actually follow directions, be committed to it, and actually do it. Because any system works. The breakdowns are when individuals don't want to do it or make a mistake, which is a game of mistakes. But it doesn't matter what system we play. The coach lays out the game plan, the soldiers will follow. If they don't, you have breakdowns. Tom? You mentioned earlier all about accountability and how, how you, you know, whatever you preach, you promote and everything. And that starts at the top. So what changes do you feel you and your staff need to make in order to have that trickle down to the coaches, to the players and everyone? You know, if I, to be honest, I probably have let my guard down on a, a lot of areas that may not matter up front. The looser you get, it may be just dress code with people. You loosen it up a little bit. You know the old saying, right? You give an inch, they take a yard. You give a yard, you know. It's be a little tighter, you know. Um, the potential of just keeping people accountable that way. Um, for me, um, I, can be, I can do a way better job in that. I think that'll that'll help create an everyday professional player and an everyday professional hockey ops department that understand that you know when you you kind of loosen some things, some people take advantage of it. And versus being the nice guy, um, things are going to change that way. Just you've mentioned a lot about 
warning players a certain way off the ice, but on the ice, and obviously you can't discuss specific players around the league, but you have a lot of skill, not a lot of size on this team. What type of player on the ice do you want? Do you want a, a big, you know, guy who can, in, uh, you know, put someone into the board? Do you, what type of player do you want uh, to add to this team to take them to the next level? I want hockey players. And that can be defined in many ways. But they, first and foremost, they have to be passionate. They, they need to love the game. They need to come every single day, punch the clock, and go to work and actually enjoy it. And then do extra work, too, you know, because they, they love the game versus just guys who play hockey. There's a huge difference in that. I want hockey players on this team. Our fans deserve those type of players. And those are players that are willing to block shots, are willing to, you know, be comfortable in confrontation, um, understand that physicality is part of the game, create a, an identity, get back to having a momentum line, a line that or two that could actually change the momentum of a, of a game. Um, that's what I'm looking for. I think our fans deserve that. Um, I think our our core and skill guys deserve that. So, um, yeah, those are some of the areas I'm, I think we need to improve, and that's up to me. There's been some mentions of conditioning. Is any part of the training programs or staff something that you feel needs to be evaluated this offseason? Staff, no. I think we have, to be quite honest, I think we're ahead of uh, – I think we're at the top when it comes to sports science and understanding where our, our guys are at and where we can push them. It's just pushing them and understanding and, and players accepting it. You know, um, They get enough days off, that's for sure, through the, through the PA. Uh, but when we go to work, we work. I ask you for an hour a day. That's it. So you should be able to handle a really crisp skate in March after a four and five or a four – doesn't matter. To me, it's a mindset. Um, so that's where I'd like to get to. Um, I, I want the game to be easy for our players. And the only way to do that is to be in the best possible shape we can be. Tom, I, I know we've seen you know the releases and everything, but, but um, do you have, just from your own perspective, a, an update on Jack, how he's doing, um, a timeline update on him? And I mean, with all these past couple of years, if you've seen the injuries pile up, are you concerned about his, you know, his injury status? Or like well, that? first, uh, successful uh, operation, surgery. Um, with that, he stayed out uh, stayed out in Vail a few extra days to, to do some rehab. Uh, he's back in Michigan, and he will make a full recovery. Um, the, the time fr frames differ. Each individual heal differently. Um, but I do expect a... A, a player who comes back with a good, uh, a lot of energy, feeling great, um, excited about the season, uh, and stronger. You know, so no, and I don't worry about. I mean, Jack's a special player. He like, doesn't get hit very often. There's a reason, you know, because <laughs> he's hard to hit. So I don't worry about that. I hope you like this question. A, a good offensive line has always been said can make a better quarterback. Now in hockey, can the defense make the goalie better? And forwards can make defense better. <clears throat> so it's all connected. We weren't connected this year. We talked about it at nauseum, about being committed, connected, and, and being competitive. We chased it all year. And at the start of the year, we were banking points, but we still weren't close to doing the right things on the ice. We were talented enough. Maybe teams weren't in top shape at that time. But we, got, we took advantage of it because we, we were talented enough. And um, I said it earlier, like, when you have a mentality of outscoring your mistakes, it's – you're going to come up short. You may be able to cover it up for a little bit, but over a long haul, it, it, it catches up to you. Um, 
but I do think it's all connected. Absolutely, we've got to be harder at the net front. That's just fundamentals. It really is. I mean, every kid who plays defense in a, as a kid, I mean, you're taught. Rather you shovel than hammer down. Get underneath someone's stick, and because if his stick's in the air, he can't get to the puck. So those are, those are areas where we, we will continue to grow. Will that help our goalie? Sure. Um, but there are also areas where we do a really good job of defending, and some squeakers are, are held in, and that's that's disheartening as well. So, um, you know, maybe our D, we want them to be a little more aggressive, but you can't do that if you don't have a, a high F3 or a committed forward that is, is understanding that I've got to be back uh, in case the puck gets out. So we just got to be better focused in that area and, and, and more connected. Tom, are you looking forward to and, and maybe to the trip to Prague uh, is, an, is something that might galvanize the group as well? Oh, uh, for sure. Um, really looking forward to that. I think, I think this group, uh, one, deserves it. Um, being asked to do this is, is I think, a, a badge of honor because um, not every team gets a chance to, to do this. I, I'm glad we're doing it at the start of the year. Uh, you know, team bonding-wise, uh, those things go a long way. Um, when you look back on your season, you go, what a great year. Uh, started in Prague um, when we really got together and got to know each other and, and we're just around each other. Not just the players, but management, ownership, you know, entire staff. Tom, do you plan on tendering all your uh, your RFAs, qualifying? Right now I am, yep. Tom, one of the things that I felt was missing this year, uh, when you look around, we talked about injuries and things like that, but Michael McLeod was a vital part of this team. And I'm wondering, do you have any hope that you'll ever get him back, or is that something that's tied up in the courts or what? Yeah, I can't answer that. I've been, you know, the league, it's just it's – I can't talk about that. Uh, look, but I can talk about Michael. Um, big loss. You know, that's a big loss. Um, and, you know, he was getting better and better and better each day. And you just, you, you can't replace that. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Have a great offseason.